everyone. Welcome back to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Molly O'Brien. I'm joined here with Adnan Wood-Smith. He is the Muslim chaplain at Brown also the president of the Rhode Island Muslim Advancement. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, it's a great pleasure to be here, Molly. We really appreciate you joining us, so thank you so much. So you have an event coming up tomorrow, and mm -hmm. before we get to that, just want to talk a little bit about the Muslim Council for Advancement here in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Just tell us a little bit about the organization and what it is you do in the community. Yeah, so the Rhode Island Council for Muslim Advancement, or RICMA for short, um, is it's an organization that basically aims to bring together the Muslim community um, both within the Muslim community itself as well as creating connections for people outside of the community to get to know people in the community and uh, build and support Muslim institutions as well. And why having this organization do you think it's so crucial to be uh, active within the community right now? Mm, well, I mean, especially right now, we're facing a, a time of great division in our country. A lot of people uh, um, uh, just have, have certain views about other kinds of people. And so, uh, especially in this time right now, it's very important that we have strong community institutions that are able to, to, to bring communities together and then teach other people about what it means to be part of that community as well. Definitely. So we kind of were going back and forth on emails and, and finding out what are some what are, what are some topics that we could talk about today before we get into just the event that you have tomorrow, which I think is, I've been actually really excited to talk to mm -hmm. you about, um, because coming up tomorrow, you are doing Intro to Islam and the Roots of Islamophobia. Right, right. Um, so before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about what it's like to be um, within the Muslim community in America right now, mm -hmm. and what it's like besides that to be a member of the Muslim community in Rhode Island. Do you mm -hmm. see, uh, do, you, do you feel like it's different in Rhode Island versus in America? Uh, and kind of just w describe to me what that's like right now. Yeah, so first of all, in America in general, I think so. there are, the, there are difficulties and there are hopes. So our community in general, I'll start with the bad so I can get to the good. Um, with with uh, our community in general is going through a lot uh, right now, as many minority communities are, in terms of misperceptions that people have of us, in terms of attacks on our institutions, our mosques, attacks on individuals, especially women out on the street who choose to, to wear the headscarf, uh, getting attacked and singled out, and that kind of thing. And so, um, and just many, many of the ways that our politicians often talk about Islam and Muslims just makes us feel often feel isolated and feel like we're not welcome in this country even though we've been here since before America was America yeah. um, and so that's those are some of the bad things the bad side that we're the difficulties we're dealing with but there's a lot of hope right now um, because there is so much focus on our community and and often we're we're singled out and there's so much misunderstanding a lot of people are coming together to express their support for us a lot of other faith communities and, and other groups in Rhode Island particularly are showing up at our mosques are reaching out to us and saying, look, we want to make sure that you understand you're welcome here and that we want you here. And so now getting it specifically to Rhode Island, so there have been incidents of, of hate and bias um, in Rhode Island. There's been graffiti at the Islamic school, um, letters targeting mosques uh, through, throughout this state. But also what's, what's unique about Rhode Island, first of all, is just the small community that's here really helps us to, to be really effective in community work. So it's great to see all these people coming together, both within the Muslim community and then other allies of the Muslim community who want to show their support. And as well, too, the foundations of our state are so inspiring as well, that, that we have a state founded on religious tolerance and wanting to, to open up uh, a, a flourishing, different flourishing religious communities in many ways in general. And so much of the ways that we can, we can express the importance of that goes back to the founding of the state itself. And do you think that really does make a difference when it comes to Rhode Island is having just those basic principles? I think it does, yeah. It's easy to forget those principles and yeah. it's easy for, for principles, even constitutional principles, to be, to be skewed and people to, to, to use them in a certain way. But when we have those and our leaders, whether they're political leaders or community leaders, are able to reference those and remind us of those, it helps bring us together and remind us of, yes, this is the community that, that generations ago people envisioned we would be and we still can be. And it really provides a grounding for us in many ways. Going back to what you said just a moment ago, you said uh, it's hard, but it's mm -hmm. also 
hopeful because right. you've had other members of other communities come out mm -hmm. and, and offer you that support. Was that almost surprising to you? Or, or I mean, you've off also offered, I was looking at your Facebook page, you've also offered your support to other communities mm -hmm. and to other religious spaces as well. Right, right. Um, I mean, I suppose, yeah, in a way we were pleasantly surprised in terms of, not in terms of the, the support that we have from other communities. I think people in general, people are decent people. They, they don't want harm for other people. Uh, in general, that's our default state. We want to live, live well together. And so not surprised really to see that, that people want us to, to, to be welcome here and, and that we're connecting with other communities. But what has been pleasantly surprising is just the, the energy and the the sustained uh, the sustained energy on that. So so there there are several people in the community, specifically uh, many Quakers and other um, religious groups, who on a consistent basis are showing up at our mosques after Friday prayers to make sure that, that we feel welcome uh, and to uh, regularly reach out to us and uh, and organize rallies to support us. And so that that kind of thing is very inspiring to see. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. That has to has to make you feel good. It and does, hopeful, yeah. like you said. Exactly, exactly, it does. Let's talk a little bit about the event. You have an uh, mm -hmm. an ongoing occurring um, the third Saturday of the month, it Intro is. to Islam mm -hmm. and the Roots of Islamophobia. This will take place at Wilson Hall at Brown University from 1030 to noon. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit tomorrow. about... Tomorrow. Uh, yes, so that would be tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me how you came about shaping this idea. Mm. Well, right now and for many years, there's been so much misunderstanding about Islam in general and Muslims in general. Um, so we really saw the need to have something regular, at least on a monthly basis, um, to, to bring people together and, and offer insight on what Islam is, what it's yeah. like being a Muslim, what that, what that means. Um, but then also, a lot of people in this country don't understand where Islamophobia comes from, yeah. where often this, this fear and hatred of Muslims in this country and of Islam, how it's linked to all kinds of, of broader things. It's linked to the way our politics uh, goes and many, many things such as uh, the way that often our politicians use fear of a particular people to, to, to gain support for policies that people might not be able to accept otherwise. So some studies show that the more that a certain people f have fear, the more likely they're, they're going to accept increased surveillance and less privacy and that kind of thing. And so a lot of people don't understand that, that fear and hatred of Muslims and Islam doesn't, doesn't, isn't completely to do with the Qur'an and with, with the religion of Islam itself. It's mostly to do with the way our society has, has built itself and often how people abuse, certain, uh, abuse power in a certain way and present certain things for a certain agenda has to do with the history of racism in this country and all of these things and and so we wanted to be able to present that in in a succinct way just uh, just a short session to kind of expose people to some of these um, these larger ideas and once again getting getting back at that hope idea we think it's really important to push these conversations of Islamophobia because uh, often people look out on the world and see how many things are going wrong with the world and think well how can I how can I make a difference how can I how can I change things and focusing on uh, the way that particular communities are being uh, made to feel unwelcome or being feared and that kind of thing can actually start helping us to address broader issues such as the way politics is going, the way how there's so much war in the world and everything. It's all linked and so we wanted to be able to present that in, in a clear way in this session. Who is this session for? Who do you think can benefit? Uh, mostly it's, it's for people who really don't know that much about Islam, Muslims or Islamophobia. Um, but from our experience, even people who've read a decent amount about Islam or know Muslims and studied a bit about Islamophobia, um, even they will, will benefit because we, we've really tried to pack a lot of information and resources in a short amount of time. Do you feel like you are opening yourself up for to be a potential target? Uh, I mean, there's always that uh, that possibility, um, but we've 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 understood, especially recently through recent rallies and things that we have, mm -hmm. that the that is always a case, and we always uh, do what we can to make sure that places are safe and secure. Mm -hmm. um, but also the opportunity that these kind of gatherings provide in terms of increasing knowledge and bringing people together really outweighs the the potential risks that that, that you might mention. Yeah. Do you think? you're taking a proactive stance to kind of combat Islamophobia? Um, yes, I mean, we're trying, we're trying to do what we can. I'm, I'm not sure I would, I would call it proactive because I think there is so much Islamophobia that we're actually, we're going against. 
Um, some studies show that there's been over $250 million poured into the American political process to convince Americans that they should fear and hate Islam and Muslims. So we're facing already, it's not really proactive, it's, it's, we're facing all this already and trying to address it and trying to, to come to a better understanding together. So in, in that case then, what else can you do? What else can everyone else do? Mm. Well, I think the, the best thing is just to increase our knowledge of Islam and Muslims and Islamophobia. And so this session tomorrow is one resource for that. Um, also, our website is a great resource, rikma.org, R-I-C-M-A dot O-R-G. Um, people there can, can find resources on Islam and Muslims and Islamophobia. Um, they can find links to connect to local mosques and Muslim organizations, as well as uh, request a speaker as well if they want to, to bring in a speaker to talk about these topics. And so the, the main thing is just increasing our understanding. And then when we increase our understanding of what Islam is um, and, and what life is like for a Muslim, then we can start to understand how we can support, ourselves, support each other a, as a community uh, and, and have institutions that, that provide accommodations for Muslims in certain ways and just have a more welcoming and supportive community in general. Do you think Islamophobia is a real problem or a real concern in Rhode Island? Uh, it is, yeah. As I mentioned to you, that, that there have been incidents that our mm -hmm. community has, has faced. So just a, just a month or two ago, several mosques received, received yeah. letters, uh, hateful letters, uh, that, that mosques throughout the country received. Um, there's been graffiti at the Islamic school, um, various threats, and, and, and um, there, has been, there has been violence against particular members as well here and there. And um, just being, being at Brown University as well, um, many of the, the students there, who is my, my direct community, yeah. many of them have experienced uh, people, uh, people yelling at them and making them feel unwelcome on the street and that kind of thing. So it is an issue here, yeah, unfortunately. And as we move forward, like you said, there's, there's kind of a troublesome time, but also mm -hmm. it can be a hopeful time. Exactly. What do you hope to see within the next few years? Uh, well, we really hope to see just better community connections, uh, a stronger community for us, which we believe that the more our individual communities are stronger, the more we, we and our institutions are stronger, the more we're stronger as a society in general. And so we really see a lot of opportunity there, an opportunity to, uh, to, to really progress as a society, to increase in the understanding with each other and just supporting each other and, and, and uh, really making Rhode Island uh, st stick to the ideals upon which it was founded and, and making a great community here. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, and uh, I did have one more thing for you I was mm -hmm. going to say. Um, why, why do you think your organization is important for just for all Rhode Islanders to, to either be a part of or to learn about, do you think? Right. Um, so just uh, returning to, to the previous point I, yeah. I made, just that the, the stronger our institutions are uh, for individual communities, the stronger we are as a whole community. Uh, and so there was just an article just uh, in the Atlantic this, this month actually about about how when, when someone is disconnected from a lot of traditional religious institutions that um, when people disconnect in that way then that's often correlated to an increase in, uh, in prejudice towards other groups um, uh, an, an increase in, in, in various ways that, that keep, us, keep us isolated and so the stronger the individual communities are in different ways the stronger we are as a community. And so we're not, we as the Rhode Island Council for Muslim Advancement, we understand that um, we, we don't want, want to make everyone Muslim and, and want to make everyone love Islam, but at least appreciate what Islam is civilizationally and what it means for many Muslims. And when we have that appreciation, we're just a, a better society and we can really learn from each other and, and build a really powerful, welcoming society in general. Overall, thank you mm -hmm. so much. Anything else you think that we should know? Um, well, all the information that, that we come tomorrow, we hope that people, uh, that we cover tomorrow, we we'll hope that people will come and, and that we consider essential information. So I think that's good enough for, for my part for today. And thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us. So Adnanwood Smith, the Muslim chaplain at Brown University, also the president of Rhode Island Council for Muslim Advancement. And I also posted a link to uh, this session on my Facebook page and Excellent. we'll have a link to it as well. Um, what other sessions do you have coming up, do you think? What else are you guys planning? Um, well, right now the, the regular thing that, that we have is that monthly session mm -hmm. uh, as well. There, there are rallies that happen here and there and, and various uh, interfaith events and, and open mosque events and that kind of thing. So if anyone goes to the website of rikma.org, 
then they can sign up for a newsletter to be notified of what's, of what's going on in our community and events and things that can happen, or they can see the community calendar there too. Perfect. And th it's full. I was looking at it. Mm. You have quite a busy schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining Thank me. I really much. appreciate your time and look forward yeah, to hearing more. Thank you.